Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this? You may ask, so I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Kezia Okafor. But before that, I'd like to say thank you for watching the show live at a later date as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, and transform their present, so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life regression, past life regression, meditation, angelic reiki, hypnosis, and angel cards to help women who feel lost get clear on their destiny and the reason for being here. Now, each episode of this show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests like today's guest, Kezia Okafor, who will be sharing her story of going through secondary infertility and how she is now helping others. Now, Kezia is a counsellor and art therapist working in private practice, specialising in fertility and women's health. She also runs mental health workshops and art healing days for women who want to explore themselves at a deeper level. Now, over the past five years, Kezia has um, been through secondary infertility, infertility to changing career, becoming a counsellor and ultimately finding herself. Now, it wasn't a journey or outcome that she expected, and yet it's been an important one. Because of this experience and journey, Kezia chose to offer emotional support where often women choose to suffer in silence and cope on their own. So without further delay, hello Kezia and welcome to the Angels of Destiny show. How are you today? I'm great Ray, thank you for having me. You're welcome. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Kezia and I want you to be part of this conversation, so please don't be shy. We'll try to say hello to everyone who says hello and answer any questions or comments live or once the show is finished. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can get updates on all recordings. So Kezia, why don't you tell us more about your journey and how you help women ultimately in finding themselves? Ah, great, thank you, Ray. So um, like you said, my journey um, started about five years ago. My son um, was two at the time and it seemed like a good point to um, try to have another baby. Um, and when that doesn't happen, um, or when it takes longer than expected, anyway, for me, it was a really difficult time. Um, it took me on a long journey, um, usual for the usual route, like medical, like gynecology, that kind of stuff. Um, but I also ended up, when they couldn't give me an answer because it was unexplained, um, I ended up. Um, seeking other routes like acupuncture, osteo. Um, I even went to see a functional nutritionist. I was, <laughs> really... yeah, I know. It was a real journey of, of of searching for an answer as to why can't I have, or why am I not getting pregnant? Um, and during that time, I realised that I was also unhappy professionally. I was working in the city in an office. Um, but just not happy at all, um, despite having a beautiful little boy, happily married. Um, and I ended up changing career. Well, it was a long, a long journey, but I ended up um, studying art therapy and eventually leaving that and changing career um, and really tapping into, actually there was something missing on a, a deeper level than just another baby. It was more, um a connection to myself i think mm -hmm. a connection to um, my purpose my meaning um feeling really unfulfilled um, yeah and deciding that actually something had to change and you know we've come i've come to a place where now i'm counseling i'm an art therapist um enjoying what i'm doing there's no <laughs> I think every story is different, but the end of my story so far is there is no, there's no baby, but there is fulfillment and happiness and um, 
complete joy in what I do and um, and a knowing that it's about helping others too on their journey and mm. giving them support because the one thing I found in my journey was the lack of emotional support. It's quite a sterile environment, you know, mm. um, fertility treatments and um, the doctors and the gynecologists, it's all you know, let's get pregnant and very sterile, yeah. no emotion, there's no support. And um, that was the one thing I found really difficult, that emotionally I needed something. I needed someone to understand what I was going through. Um, and there was no one, really. That There's friends, there's family, but there's not... I don't know. It was just something that I needed more than, than that. Than, yeah. Like, yeah, you will get pregnant. It will happen, it will happen. Or, you know, the doctors saying, oh, we don't know why. This is, you know, and kind of just being very sterile about it. Um, and I think it's, for me, as I didn't choose the IVF route, I chose that that wasn't for me. Um, and taking a route of just finding out who I am. Um, for me, the emotional support that came through um, therapy and counselling um, was just a major lifesaver for me really um and that's why I think I'm on this journey and why I think it's important for me now to help other women who are also in this position or yeah no one expects to be in that position <laughs> no 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 they, they they don't so so you didn't go down the IVF route yeah um what, what made you decide not to really do that one um it didn't feel right. It didn't feel right. There was no, like I said, it was unexplained. There was no, there's no reason why. So I kept thinking, well, I don't really even consider myself infertile because there's no reason why I can't get pregnant. Um, it's yeah, because you already had one. I've, I've got one. Yeah, I've got one. He's beautiful. Um, and so it was just like, well, I, I don't want to do that. And then there's the financial implication as well because I've already got one, you you don't get it on the NHS. Um, but the main reason was really that we just felt like this isn't for us. This doesn't this doesn't fit us. This doesn't make sense. Yeah. What's happening in our story and what's happening in our lives and um, yeah, and in our bodies, it just didn't it didn't feel right. Um, I think a lot of people think that everyone who does who has infertility goes through IVF. <laughs> And it's not it's not true. I think a lot of people choose not to do IVF. But mm. then um then you're left kind of figuring it out for yourself. Um, what do you want to do? You know, um what kind of holistic treatments are there? You know, it's a it's a huge minefield. Um and the one thing people don't tell you to do is to go and get emotional support. No, I suppose they, they don't. It's all about, well, have a baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 I term it and I look at it as being very body conscious that the, um, the industry, um, the fertility industry itself is very body conscious. You walk in and they're just like, okay, we'll fix you. We'll, we'll get you a baby. We'll get you pregnant. And it's like, oh, that's great. That's great. But actually, there's a whole you know, a whole host more going on, um, you know, inside as well that is, isn't is being addressed. So, so yeah, so how did, so how did you realise that you needed to go for counselling and how did you find, find the right counsellor? Well, it, funny enough, it, it coincided, so I had, um, I was doing my counselling course anyway, and as part of that, I had to be in therapy. Um, that was compulsory. So I found an art therapist. Um, she didn't specialise in fertility treatment, but I spent a lot of my time speaking to her about um, what I was going through. Um, it was almost like a lifesaver at the time because although I hadn't sought it out because I was going through fertility issues, it was like, actually, I was able to take it to her anyway 
um, even though it was to do with my course and um, it was just a, an added support in just in my life in general at the time but it also coincided with the fact that we were going through all those treatments and all those tests and stuff um, so if I was going through it again and not counselling I think it would be quite difficult um, to find a counsellor um, I probably would just find a general counsellor um, however you google and there are counsellors out there that do specialise infertility um and i think if any good you know gynecologist or fertility treatment should be directing women to good counselors and um, therapists for that added emotional support because it is an emotional um emotionally demanding time um emotionally stressful um and it's it's depleting almost of your energy um because it is it just takes so much of your um, your thoughts, your actions, everything is geared towards um, getting pregnant. So um, for me, and I kept saying to my therapist at the time, actually, um, there needs to be more emotional support. There needs to be more emotional support, and I'm so glad that I'm I'm in therapy going through this because I don't know what I would have done without it. Just to say to someone, oh, I had a treatment today and it was awful. Um, and I felt really alone and I felt really um, sad and, you know, it was just awful. Um, and have her understand and listen and kind of just be there through that with me um, was just, yeah, it was amazing at the time. Yeah. And was she a particular um, counsellor who dealt with fertility issues or was she just the general no, um, she was an art therapist, an art psychotherapist. Um, so she wasn't, she didn't specialise in fertility at all. Um, however, she was really good at um, helping me make sense of what I was feeling, why I was feeling it, um, helped me make sense of, you know, to, to go through IVF or not, um, my feelings around that, um, helped me to make sense of, the guilt that I had over not giving my you know my child a sibling um all of those things that you kind of deal with and on your own even though she wasn't a specialist in that field she was able to still be with me in that space and in that um in that period and just support me support me through it mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, so what made you think for um, an art of art therapy? <laughs> I have a background in art, actually. I went to um, art college. I studied photography. Um, done art all of my life, really. Um, it's been a big part of my life until, um, until I was about 21. And then I, I kind of gave it up. Um, and went and worked in an office, you know, life took over, as it does. Yeah, I know that one. <laughs> um, yeah, life took over, bills to pay, and so it kind of went by the wayside for a really long time. Uh, got married, I had my son, and then I started to think, yeah, like, something's not, you know, something's not missing, something's missing, not really that happy, not that, um, yeah, not that fulfilled in life and I was talking to my friend that I did my degree with and she said oh what about art therapy <laughs> and just like that it was like yeah yeah why not why not give that a go and I think what I had been looking for was something to engage that creative side of me but also give me something else where I could uh, use it uh, as a tool um, but also do something more, help others or, you know, use my other um, strengths as well um, that I had found uh, in my other career in an office. Like I really liked coaching people. I really help, liked helping people, um, really liked help bringing people along and training people. Um, yeah, so it felt like when she said art therapy, it was like a light bulb that kind of was like, yeah, 
that, that will work. That, that combines my interests. That, that sounds great. Um, and that started the journey. Yeah. So, so it's kind of like you started with art and you've kind of like ended back, back with art. Yeah. With, 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 with art again. So how does art therapy work? Right. So art therapy um, works on a really deep level. So there is still talking involved, just like any talking therapy. Um, very similar to counselling, so we talk. But what the art allows us to do is just to work on a much deeper level to work with the unconscious process. Um, and it's really great for things like trauma, really great for um, people who find it really difficult to put emotions or to put experiences into words. So where um, you might find that difficult, we, we would use the art um, to show the experience or, um, yeah, just to give words where it might be difficult. It's also really good for people who, um, who are able to talk, but are able to talk in a way that's quite shall we say, defensive. So it doesn't allow, you know, when we're talking and we're in a constant stream, sometimes we don't get to the feeling. And so the art, again, allows us to, to get to that deeper unconscious, what am I feeling? Um, what did I, what am I experiencing? And, um, and a great way as well is it brings us right into the moment because the art happens in the here and now, in the present. Um, so although we... Um, in the uh, therapy we might be talking about a past experience we're talking about it in the here and now and so we're really able to feel that um in the moment in the therapy room um and work with that unconscious to um to reflect look at what we feel look at what's happening but then also to um make changes or to see what change could look like um to rehearse the possible of what might need to change or how I could change. Um, and you do that all through the arts and then we integrate that back into the ego. And that's really, um, I think it's a fascinating way of working. Um, some people can be a bit like, oh, I don't know about art, but actually. I, I was gonna I was gonna say, do you need to be able to draw? <laughs> you know, do, do, you, do you need to? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know been doing stick figures or you, you know yeah, yeah, no, I constantly do stick figures it's fine um I did photography remember so you know. oh yeah <laughs> I'm not a fine artist no definitely not a, um no need to do art I, I work in the sand tray I work with clay um postcards um play-doh um we we use the body the body's a great way to work because it allows um, a person to get into their body and where they're feeling something. A lot of people avoid feeling and feeling in their body. So that's also a great way of working. Um, so you definitely don't need to be an artist at all. Um, and in the with the artwork, it's not really about making art. It's really about what that artwork represents, um, what it represents for the client, um, what what it is that they're feeling when they make the artwork or what that artwork represents um, for them. So it's definitely don't have to be an artist at all to do art therapy. Um, it really is about working at a deeper level. And, you know, I work with clients and they're always shocked by what comes out. It's always unexpected. They don't know where it's going to go. And, you know, it could be working with metaphor as well. You know, metaphor is a great way to work. Um, so the mental images or, yeah, you know, or word association, that kind of stuff. What, you know, what's associated with that feeling? Um, yeah, there's, there's so much that comes out in that unconscious um, way of working that um, allows for really deep therapeutic change yeah I love it as you can tell <laughs> yeah and I suppose it's kind of like really getting back to um childhood really isn't it because you're getting to um you know let your imagination go wild you know 
um you know you're making clay figures and oh, yeah. It, it, yeah yeah it's just yeah. like like being 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 a child again which i suppose in a way helps you with the therapy because it brings up all those childish happy type feelings that you get of course it takes people a lot um, back to childhood um and it also can be quite frightening for people as well just to you know to play you know some people have don't have great associations with play might might not even have been able to play as a child you know um whereas I, yeah so it is it it brings up different things for different people um and the importance of play actually in life in general and just being able to create you know we create the lives that we live and as simple as making a drawing but that is you know representative of so much more in life you know that actually if we can learn to create and play um you know don't worry about getting it wrong or you know drawing outside the lines or whatever. <laughs> actually in the scheme of things those things don't really matter um but it's being able to be expressive um of who we are who we really are um that authentic self like this is how I feel this is how I want to express myself and and the artwork does all of that you know and it's and it's really an amazing process to watch someone um I worked with a client who um you know found it difficult to play and then to to encourage them and bring them along and then they are eventually able to create something and just be astonished that they created it is just you know it's amazing yeah it it it, it is and how you know how how to uh, you know do you get um clients referred to you do do they find you know how how how, how do they tend to find you yeah and, you know you know because because it is it's something that's really well known um you know art therapy or or is it sort of like something that not a lot of people know about? You know, I I think it's something that people don't know that much about. <laughs> um, so when people do contact me, they're like, oh, art therapist, what's that about, you know? Um, and to be honest, I didn't know about all the different types of therapies before I became, an, a, you know, a counsellor. Um, so I think it's, you know, you can find me. I'm on the um, National Counselling Society. I've got my own website, um, my my own private practice, um, which is the counselling. So, um, yeah, those are the ways to contact uh, me and to find me. Um, yeah, and it's, it is referrals, um, word of mouth as well, um, which for any business is how it works, really. Yeah. Um, but um, I think because counselling and therapy is such a private thing for most people, yeah, I think referrals are usually the way to go. People want to know, well, who, what worked for you? Who worked for mm. you? Like, what were they like? Um, yeah, and I think it works in that way. I think counselling, it can be quite daunting to contact a stranger. Um, and yet, while it feels weird at first going to see a stranger... It's, it, it becomes this um, this support, this this weird kind of place where you take your you know your everyday life and it becomes what I used to call my me time, you know <laughs> like <laughs> you know that, that's my support. That's how I choose to um, offload yeah you know all that stuff that you know keep inside and actually yeah so there's lots of directories out there um yeah i'm on the uh, national counseling society and do you find that um you know uh people tend to have gone you know have gone through all the um issues and that's quite a while before they actually get in get in touch or do they kind of like, um, oh, I think I need some, some, you know, so, some counselling or, or some or some art therapy, therapy be, because I I would assume that, and and this is just a, you know, I'm assuming 
that do people tend to have gone through quite a lot before they actually reach out? Yeah, most most people tend to have gone through quite a lot, actually. Um, I don't, like going through things, I think people don't really, it, I don't know if it doesn't occur to reach out or maybe it's just not, um, it's just not a thing that, you know, you grow up doing, you're in the middle of a crisis, you don't think, oh, I'm going to reach out. Like most people tend to isolate and, and want to fix things on their own. So usually it's after they've gone through a crisis or um or you know they're really at the worst worst point of a crisis and then they reach out um and then you get some people who just haven't got over something um you know there are a lot of people who think I should be over that and I'm struggling to get over that and they stay silent or stay quiet for quite a long time like things like miscarriage or loss um just choosing to not choosing but feeling like actually I should be over it you know um it could be worse and so those kind of things take it seems that some people take a bit longer to reach out and and ask for support or even feel that they can ask for support and they still you know and they hold on to that for such a long time and um yeah and I wish it was different to be honest I wish that people would reach out much sooner because it's just having that support at that time at that moment with someone who you know um like I said is a stranger but is someone who is non-judgmental it's completely confidential um and they're just there for you with whatever it is that you need at that time yeah Um, yeah yeah, I, I, I suppose it is. I suppose really we're, we're kind of like we've been brought up to not ask for help or assistance. Like, no, let's let's keep it to ourselves. Let's 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 soldier on. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, we'll we'll go for we'll go and seek help as and when, you know, it gets too bad rather than, OK, if we, we go and seek help now, then it's not going to get that bad and we can actually get through it quicker. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. I think um, there's definitely an idea that if I seek help, it's like a form of weakness. I don't know. Um, and, you know, I was one of those people, you know, like, I can get through it. I, I, I don't need to, I don't need support. I don't need to ask for help. Um, it will get better. I'll be fine. I was, you know, that great, you know, yeah. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. <laughs> You know, so I, I, so I get it. I get that, um, and it's, it feels like this conditioned behaviour that we have to unlearn, actually, in society mm-hmm. in general. That actually weakness isn't, um, it's, it's not. You know, there isn't weakness in saying actually I need help. Um, there isn't weakness in saying actually I'm struggling right now. I, I'm, I'm finding this really difficult, and I need support, um, and I need to go and find support um that isn't in my family or my friends um it's it's really unlearning those things that as a kid like you know suck it up get on with it actually sometimes we just can't Mm -hmm. and that's okay um and it's learning to say you know what I want to put myself first I want to put my health first and I want to go and make sure that you know I am okay so I can be you know the wife that I want to be or the mother that I want to be or the friend that I want to be the daughter that I want whatever it is um and just yeah like it's such a yeah it's such a conditioned response that especially as women I think you know we're the nurturers we're the givers we're the ones that um are there when people fall we're the ones that clean the cup and and the bruises and um we do all the emotional work and the emotional talk with friends um and yet we can often put ourselves last in the pecking order Mm. um everyone comes before us and we're kind of taught that from quite little you know like um yeah you know especially if we're growing up with you know 
brothers or whatever like you know there are those systems are in place and so we grow up thinking actually you know we've got to be the caretaker and we see our mums do it and we see our grandmothers do it um and so we're having I think this generation is learning to say actually it's really difficult and I yeah I do need to be able to hold my hand up and say I need help and I think it's really important for people like me and you and other therapists out there to have these conversations to open up these conversations to you know the normal everyday person so that they know oh okay it is okay to go and see a professional or you know a therapist you know just like it is like I always compare it to if you had a broken arm yeah you just sit and go well it might fix itself or well, some people might but you yeah. know most people don't sit there and go well it, you know it'll fix itself you know you go and and get the medical help that you need and so when you're you know feeling anxious or depressed or just not right I mean I I can put a, a, a real feeling to how I was feeling at the time I remember that but I know I didn't feel good I know that I felt I couldn't work it out I couldn't I, I, yeah I knew there was this whole so much and I remember my therapist saying perhaps we need to grieve perhaps there's a process of grief that needs to happen here and I remember thinking how can I grieve something that I don't have <laughs> like that's really strange but actually it was what I needed she was able to put words to what I needed and so sometimes that's what we need we need to go to a professional who can listen understand and put words to what we can't explain um just in the same way as we would go to a doctor to and I, I mean that's not like a diagnosis or anything but just to yeah. have someone listen and say you know perhaps this is what needs to happen perhaps we need to perhaps you need to you know cry or let it out or whatever mm-hmm. it you need in that moment and there's something very empowering about that yeah 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 there is uh, you know and, and obviously as um you know therapists ourselves helping others you know we we you know we understand that we also need sometimes that help and that guidance to offload on on people and because we've got that awareness we actually go and do it yes yeah um, and that and then it's kind of like I suppose you know if people um kind of like starting that now hopefully that will um you know put it on you know their children will see that and their children will start yeah. going actually my mum went and got my mum went and actually got some help and you know she's still a wonderful person so maybe it's not so bad that I go and yeah and help. I agree I think that it could only be a good thing for the future generations um for the children that we have I know that you know I was miserable I was absolutely miserable um, going through all of that all. And I was missing. I was really missing out on what I did have. Um, this, you know, this beautiful um, little boy. And now I'm like, oh, my God, you know, I feel better. I feel great. I feel like um, I can be a better mother. I feel I can be more present as a mother, actually. Um, and so I'm very open to him. I would say, you know, I'm going to get help. I'm going to, someone's going to, I'm going to go and talk about my emotions to um to a lady and it's like okay <laughs> you know yeah. um and I think that is the gift that we can give our children and future children and potential children is that if we can figure out how we feel and why we feel that way and what's happening to us um then we become more emotionally aware and then we help our children to be more emotionally aware. You know, once you figure out how you manage your emotions, then you you, you just model it for them naturally and they they pick up on that. Yeah. And like you said, and, and it's giving them that idea that actually it's that's normal. Yeah, I can mm. tell someone about about that. That's okay, that's fine. Um so really changing, hopefully <laughs> 
<laughs> for the generations that come after us that actually yeah there's more there's so much more out there than just you know struggling on your own you know you can go and talk to someone and you can go and get you know whatever therapy whatever works and that's the beauty isn't it mm. like I said I didn't know before I done this how much therapies there are yeah um, and then once you start to look and you realize how many therapies there are like you like it was amazing meeting you and going oh wow like that's that's amazing and I think there's a therapy out there for everyone mm. incredible yeah um, you know and the internet and just opening that up where whereas before you would be I don't know without the internet <laughs> oh, the yellow pages I'm, yeah. I'm guessing that you know that 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 you know that that's what it was all oh, yellow pages or the library or something yeah. yeah exactly so it feels like things have opened up and actually there's there's so much more out there than which is probably why you know I didn't go down the medical route. I went down a more holistic route of trying to find a more natural way, like going to acupuncture, going to osteo, reflexology, all these different kinds of things, which all gave me different benefits at different times. And um, I found, you know, had their benefits and were really great. Um, but it just goes to show that you can do so much and um, there is so much out there. Yeah. So, as you know, um, I do guided meditation and angel card reading. So each week I always like to ask my guests, would you like a mini guided meditation or an angel card for yourself and those watching? Mm, I'm intrigued. I'm, I think I'm going to go for an angel card. <laughs> why not? Everyone always goes for angel cards. <laughs> and I can, I can see why, you know, the show is called Angels and Destiny and the angels are everywhere around us. So we might as well go go for the card and and as people know um when I do my uh do the angel cards I do the cards for what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time I don't predict the future with the cards um because like you were saying earlier everything in the present although I work with the past the past is to heal so you can be fully present and I yeah. take people into the future but if you know what your future is you're then more fully in the present so it's as you do with your therapy everything is is for being here in the yeah. present yeah at this here and now so what does Kezia and everyone who's watching oh well, need to know okay so we got rejuvenating rain clear the past heal the present which <laughs> I think is really quite um I think that's quite apt isn't it I think that's that's very apt with with what we've actually been talking about. Yeah, that's 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 amazing. <laughs> yeah, as I said, the the um the the yeah the angels always come out with 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 the with the with the right cards. So it really is, you know, fair for anyone watching around this because obviously this card was pulled for you. It is start looking at clearing your past. Um, because when you start clearing your past, you start healing your present, and when you're in your present, you're actually able to move forward with with your life um, mm. and actually enjoy your life. Mm. And it's like it's like rejuvenating, you know, a cleansing. You know, we, we've got rain going around all, all, all oh, the yeah. time. <laughs> So, so I would say, and this is both to this is to you and to everyone watching this. Go and stand out in the rain. I was just go, gonna, I might go and stand out in the rain. <laughs> go and go outside and stand in the rain and just let the rain wash mm. everything uh, away from you. Know, don't put an umbrella up or anything. Just get wet. Yeah, powerful. It, it is. Yeah, I like that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kessie, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers? Um, yeah, I mean, my thoughts really with that, that card was really how, and the more I do this work, you know, the more I look at my, you know, my life and the things I've been through, and continue to do my work on myself 
I realise how important the moment, the present moment is. And I, I come back to the present moment a lot. And um, working in therapy is all about being in the present moment and what's happening. Um, and so for me, it's just to impart to everyone how important it is to try and become more aware of being in the present um, and take control from the present moment and, you know, not be in the anxious past or the anxious future, but just to really be here, um, present, wide, awake, open and aware of, yeah, what's happening. Wise, yeah. wise words. <laughs> So I hope everyone you found, um, you've enjoyed this and found um, it insightful and the words of wisdom that Kezia has given you will help you further on your journey. So Kezia, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Yeah, so uh, I've got a Facebook page, um, Instagram, they're both at Zia Counselling, that's Z-I-A Counselling, so that's the last part of my first name. Um Yes, yeah, so they can connect with me there. I have a website also at um, www.seacounseling.co.uk. Um, yeah, so they can connect with me um, through those pages. Um, I don't know if you'll put the link. Yeah, well, what I'll do is I'll, put, I'll yeah. put a post at the end and I'll put all those links in so that if people yeah. want to connect with you, they can just they can just click on them and go straight go straight to the pages. Yeah, and just, you know, what I would always say to people is, you know, you don't have to post or anything like that. They can just send me a private message um, if they want to connect with me or ask me anything um, about counselling, mental health or um, how I could support them. Um, and I'll get back to them as soon as possible. Oh, that's, that's brilliant. So everyone, thank you so much for watching. And I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And if you have reached that crossroads in your life and you need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call so we can chat about um, how I can help you um, and see whether we're fit to actually work together. And if future life progression um, interests you, then I'll be teaching a three day certified uh, future Life Progression Practitioner Training on the 15th, 16th and 17th of November at the Claverton Hotel in Blackheath. So feel free to contact me for more details and I'll also put the link in the comments below. Now, next Monday, the 21st of October at 8pm UK time, my guest will be Hannah Carr, who will be sharing her three secrets to reclaim and sustain your energy. So please join us for what I think will be an interesting conversation. So, Kezia, thank you very much for um, taking part in the show and thank you to those um, that have been watching live or watching the replay. And um, if you're watching the replay, don't forget you can still make comments and we will come back and, um, and check on them. So, Kezia, thank you very much. Thank you. And everyone, I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.